Well, thank you to Jim Bethke for um, an opportunity here to speak to, to speak in California. Usually I'm speaking to growers in Hawaii about um, snails and slug and other pests that we ship to California. Uh, this slide here is a photo of uh, the Cuban slug that Rory mentioned. So it's field collected. This is all field collected and it's, we're getting ready for a, a trial, a slug bait trial. So it just shows you what's out in the field and it's very easy to collect that amount of uh, Cuban slugs in Hawaii. Uh, these are some of the species that um, we're dealing with and many of these has already been mentioned by many of the speakers earlier. The Cuban slug, the semi-slug, giant African snail, we have a native cone snail. It's tiny, it's less than a quarter inch. That's primarily a quarantine pest. And we have a zonotoides, which is an alien flat spiral shell snail that's a problem on orchid roots. And that's a quarantine problem and a production problem. Okay. Uh, there's other species, primarily uh, quarantine pests. Derocerus and also another uh, genus here, Megamathium. Uh, and these are quarantine pests, primarily on foliage plant plants and cut flowers and foliage that are exported from Hawaii to other states and to other foreign countries. And as you know, and as Tracy gave an, gave an excellent presentation of this issue with the parasitic nematode, the um, red lungworm. And you all heard about it, about it, I won't say anything more. It is an issue. Uh, and, and primarily, uh, the danger to humans is, is the contaminated raw vegetables. So we really emphasize the importance of washing. And washing it not with, with um, cold water, but I recommend hot water. And I'm gonna show you, I mean, the reason why uh, hot water is so effective. And, and I'll have some data on that. The problem we face, where I come from is high rainfall. Our annual rainfall is over 130 inches a year. And, and the products, we have problems with the slug baits molding. And that's been a huge, and it just doesn't last. And, and with biological control in Hawaii, uh, there has been mention about biological control, but it has to be very specific because we have a rich uh, native snail fauna in Hawaii. So therefore, if we have any, any parasite or any um, by a control agent, it has to be species specific. We can't, you know, we don't want it to affect our native, um, native snails. Okay, this is a, a summary of some of the control uh, research that we've done. This is some work we did with um, copper hydroxide and um, Robin mentioned this product is textile, is that right? Or spin out is what I know that. I think it's, it's um, made by um, CPRO, but it's, a, it's copper hydroxide. It's a fungicide. Do you know a coside? It's a, so it's coside. Actually, it's, it's copper hydroxide in latex paint. And this is a trial that we did uh, several years ago where the inside of this pot is coated with this copper hydroxide. And it's actually coated to prevent, uh, uh, it's actually for root pruning. So it prevents uh, bounding of roots in, in the pot. But it's an excellent repellent. We, we had a piece of lettuce in that pot. And as you can see, they'll eat that lettuce, but they'll re, they'll, they won't remain in that pot, whereas the control pot on the lower photo is untreated. So it shows that it's highly uh, repellent. Uh, we've done work with um, the metaldehyde baits, and I have some data comparing deadline and metarex. Uh, a lot of the orchid growers do use the, the Durham granular, the 7.5G. And liquid slugfest has shown to be effective. And there's other liquids that we've looked at. Imidan, it's an old organophosphate. Uh, I think it's phosmet is the common name, but that's, that has snails and slugs on the label. So that's an, another product um, possibly for, for uh, snails and slugs. And Meserol, 75 uh, wettable powder, but it's a restricted use pesticide. So that discourages uh, some of the nurseries from, from using that product. Here's some work we did on the orchid snail or bush snail. Again, it shows that slugfest at one and two X and Mazarol were effective against this bush snail. Uh, yeah, that's all I'll say about that. Uh, this is some recent work we did with uh, Metarex and Deadline. And, and this was done in collaboration with, a, with one of the nurseries. Because as you know, they both have the same active ingredient. They're both 4% metaldehyde. And they both claim 
that they have superior, you know, super weatherability, and, and you know that's the same with deadline, and that it can handle as much as six inches of rain or heavy water in over 14 days. And so we did a, a like a consumer report test, and this shows a photo of what it looks like for, with four inches of rain in a shade house, where the temperature is averaging 76 degrees Fahrenheit. And in four days, it's molded over, both products, heavily molded over. And we carried this test out seven, 14, and 21 days. Of course, control, we had a zero day. And just quickly, uh, some results here. Uh, the, I haven't done the statistics on it, but it shows a trend that, uh, let's see, the deadline at, at seven days and 14 days has had a slightly higher mortality than Metarex. And at seven days, again, it was four inches of rain, and at 14 days, uh, it was weathered for, with five inches of rain under shade house conditions. Okay, at 21 days, mortality was minimum. But we did get, at seven days, you, know, you do get up to 70% mortality with deadline. So it's still active, although with all that molding. And so I think um, it's, a, it's something that maybe the manufacturers to, should work on is some anti-molding compounds in these slug baits. And we have the same problem with ant baits, like with Amdro and Extinguish Plus is with the molding problem. <clears throat> okay, this is, I'm gonna end with this. Um, it's a, a short presentation. This is, um, we'll look at it the other way now. These are um, slugs that are, were on our Christmas trees that we import from Washington and Oregon. This is in November of 2011. And um, there was quite a few slugs in our shippings. And you know, we, we have them shipped in these 40-foot um, freight containers, and there's hundreds of these containers that, I, that are imported. And one 40-foot one container has about 450, 400 to 200, 450 Christmas trees. And um, this is what it looks like, okay? When you open the, and, and the slugs has a tendency to move to the door, so they're just waiting for you. As soon as the inspectors open the door at the end of the, at the doorway, and so it's quickly detected, and there was no treatment. Uh, the only option was take it back, or we had come up with this hot shower treatment. And so they tested it. We were, we, there, there was, it was, we were very hes hesitant. Department of Ag thought it would not tolerate this time and temperature. Because it was under quarantine, Department of Agriculture did, did a quick test on efficacy, and they found that 118 degrees Fahrenheit for eight minutes is all that's needed to control these slugs. And I have a list of species in the next, in the next uh, slide. But then here's an example of a Douglas fir tree 22 days after a hot water treatment at 118 degrees Fahrenheit for eight minutes. And we could detect no, no significant negative effect. In fact, there might have been some positive effect because there was hydration of the tree with, with, all, with that water applied, with that hot water applied to the trees. And again, it's, it's very labor intensive because you know, in, in that treatment, that's a, this is the treatment chamber here. Okay, this, these are shower nozzles. There's about 100 shower nozzles uh, with, with um, the nozzle tip is um, a hollow cone nozzle. And, and so there's about 30 to 40 trees that we, we stack up in there for treatment. We can't put too many more because you know, we need the penetration to assure that that 118 degrees is achieved. Uh, this is this past Christmas. So this is November, December 2012. Trees from, and sorry, uh, Robin, I need to say this though, that most of the trees were from Oregon. And, and, and the species of slugs there, Arion, and there was like how many? One, two, three, four species of Deroceros that, was, that, was, that infected. And there was like 15,000 trees that, we, that were infested. And so it was, it was a nightmare. And I, I hope this doesn't happen again this coming <laughs> Christmas. And, and so it's very labor intensive. So this is the container, a 40 foot container of infested, infested trees. This is the treatment chamber. And then it's taken out of the treatment chamber and put into an uncontaminated uh, ch chamber, uh, freight container with, um, with, the, the, with the clean trees. And this is what it looks like in the treatment chamber. So these are the trees and, and again the nozzles and this is the, the front of the um, container. This is a 24-foot refrigerated container that was modified into a hot shower chamber. And the source of the heat are these three 
tankless propane water heater. And so it's showered, there's pumps, it's showered, and the water is recycled back in, it's filtered and recycled back into the chamber. Uh, so basically that was, yeah, that was the, what the procedure uh, that was used. So we didn't have to, the, these trees didn't have to be re uh, take, returned to uh, California. Uh, some additional work with hot water again. It's just at 113 degrees Fahrenheit against Veronicella, that's a Cuban slug, Deroceros reticulatum, and the semi-slug. And in this, in, in this trial, it shows that at um, 113 degrees for five minutes, 100% uh, mortality is achieved. Although we did have, in this one, we, know we, did, have, we did have quite a, a high rate of natural mortality there. So this needs to be repeated, but we're doing more work with, with hot uh, water and, and slugs and snails. And I think that's, well, this is just an example of an Ancidum orchid that was treated at, um, at 113 de degrees Fahrenheit for five minutes. And the primary focus is in the roots of these orchids, orchid plant, because it harbors this, you know, it's, this bush snail is feeding on roots of um, these orchids. And it was able to tolerate um, that temperature and it effectively controlled the bush snail or uh, zonotoides. And I think that's all I have. This is just a quick summary and that invasive slugs and snails are ma major quarantine pests in Hawaii. There are several species that cause serious damage to all of our agricultural crops and ornamental crops. You know, the, the rat lungworm issue is huge uh, and hope we don't spread it to other states. Biological con control of snails and slug uh, needs to be very specific because of our native fauna. Copper hydroxide, I think, has, has more um, application possibly and the problem with the metaldehyde baits is, is the moldy uh, conditions due to high rainfall and hot water between 113 degrees to 118 degrees Fahrenheit will probably control most species of snails and slugs. And so the big question is if, if the host or the uh, commodity or product can tolerate that temperature. Okay, that's all I have, thank you. This is my research support staff and funding by the Farm Bill, USDA, AFES, Hawaii Department of Agriculture, and support by, by the industry. And this is for here is a photo of Hilo Bay. Uh, and it's, um, it's in February where we have, you know, you can be surfing in the bay and in one hour be on the top of Mauna Kea and ski, uh, be skiing. Thank you. <laughs>